time in Mancota in southwestern Saskatchewan with a bunch of dogs and handlers who work hard for a living. <coughs> Welcome to the Hilltop Sheepdog Trials. Now hang in here with me for a minute. How long would it take you or I to gather up a group of 30 inexperienced sheep, get them all going in the same direction, keep them going in the same direction, and then load them onto a stock trailer? And by inexperienced, I mean these sheep are young and haven't been moved a lot. And so, according to the competitors at this trial, they have no respect for the dogs working them. Oh, and one more thing. There's a time limit. They need those sheep in the red trailer and up on the hill so the sheep herding trial can continue. Let's see how quickly one man and one dog operating in obscurity more than a mile from the trials can get it done. The results are, in one word, amazing. Yeah, so we've got a number of classes happening here today. Um, this is a field trial. We also have arena trials, which are much more contained situations. But in the field trial, it's a tremendous test of a dog's natural ability, of the handler's ability to navigate a group of sheep through a course. It absolutely mimics the old days of shepherding, um, where you had to move sheep from this field to that field, and it might not be fenced between, and you got to move the rams away from the females, etc., etc. And, and so the dog is the primary tool. So that's what this this is sort of replicates and practices and so we've got classes um, the elementary class would be novice which means a handler that's very new to it with a dog often that's quite new um, then our next class up is a pro novice class and that could be a more experienced handler or even an open handler or pro handler with with a young dog an inexperienced dog or it could be an inexperienced handler with, who purchased a pro dog so so one of the two members of the team is going to be experienced and one is going to be inexperienced. And then the top class is your pro class or your open class. And that's um, an experienced dog or a dog that's well trained at the top of its game and a handler who's kind of qualified and, and, and is able to run at that, at that level. And we also have an aged class which is nurseries which is just under a certain age the young dogs get to run together. If you ever wondered how the concept of purpose-bred dogs evolved, dogs like these elite border collies will help your understanding. Dogs kept, refined, and bred for a purpose, where exceptional males and females with the right mixture of brains, athleticism, and health were bred together to embed those traits in future generations. Dogs that had reputations and were keen workers driven by internal genetics to work with their human partners to drive and protect sheep. Dogs who passed their passion for sheep to their offspring in a reliable and predictable way. Pups that not only had the drive to work but had the physical ability, stamina, coupled with the intelligence to work away or independently. Dogs as selectively bred as a perfect strawberry or a prize-winning rose. Well, time's up. Did you think the dog could finish in two and a half minutes? Be prepared to be amazed. What we're trying to do is um, we, we all got a dog. We send it from our feet. And I'd say these five sheep are set out at, I'm guessing, probably about 500 yards or so from where the handler is. And, and so the dog is sent independently. The handler can't move, has to stand beside a post. And just through a series of whistles and sometimes voice commands, the handler is going to um, help navigate this dog such that it's able to move the sheep through a pre-described course. And, and so the first part is the dog picking a route to get around the sheep. Um, once it gets to the other side of the sheep, it works quite independently to do what we call the lift, which is get them moving and get them moving in the direction of the handler. So their first and primary job is find their sheep, get to the other side and bring them to the handler from where the dog was sent. And as they do that, we do have a, a set of markers, a, a couple panels. We want to try to get through the center of them and you're judged on, on how straight you do, how straight your sheep are. 
And then after that, it's a matter of pushing your sheep, you know, in a variety of different lines to get through some other panels, some other obstacles, and you get judged on, on basically the method of work. If they're walking or trotting quietly in a straight line, you're going to do very well. If they're running all over kingdom, come, then uh, you're going to do poorly. And um, and if you're harassing your sheep, you're probably going to be called off. So so really, what's cool about it is, is the better you handle your dog, the better you handle your sheep, the more rewarded you are. So it's constantly, constantly helping us strive to be better sheepmen, better dogmen, and just better to everything we've been given to work with here. Um, so that, in a nutshell, is, is how it works. That was amazing. While it might seem to the casual observer that penning the sheep is the ultimate desired goal, there are actually points awarded for every aspect of the course. The lift, going through the gates, sometimes shedding within the shedding circle, and of course, penning. There are additions and deductions all along the way. And while it's exciting to watch the pro and experienced dogs in action, it's the young and inexperienced dogs who are learning the ropes and competing for the first time that are really a sight to see. One interesting point to note is that once the handler commits to the gate and grabs a hold of the rope, he may not let go of the rope. Also, he may not touch the sheep with his hand, the gate, or his staff, and the dog may also not touch the sheep. Were you rooting for Scott's dog? I know I was. I was really relieved when finally the gate slammed shut. What's your dog's name? This is Mr. Moss. Hi, Mr. Moss. I just add the Mr. But <laughs> good dog. <laughs> Have you gone already? No. Nope, How many tells running. you? Oh, where are we? I think we're running 12th here. Yeah. Okay. This is. Uh, we're just getting into this um, at least open part. Open. There's just all kinds of I, uh, levels of dogs, yeah, eh? I went to burn into the lums there for our very first open, and then we were at Meltzer at Airdrie for the Westerns. That was my second open ever. This is not my third open ever. And with COVID, I kind of missed the pro novice season, so we're just kind of flying at. But he's running pro novice here too, so he's gonna be. He's gonna do some work. <laughs> It isn't a case of just blowing like a regular whistle. You have to have your teeth and your, um, your tongue in a particular place. And uh, some people take to it naturally, particularly people who finger whistle. Um, but some of us, it takes a long time for us to learn how to blow it. <laughs> I did, <laughs> a long, long time. But once you've got it, it's, it, it's a really helpful tool because at a distance, obviously, you can't shout that loud at these kind of distances. Any dogs pick up on, on the whistle. Everybody can choose their own whistles. There's some basic ones that most everybody uses, a lie down and a walk up, a fairly standard. And then the flank whistles go right or go left. Um, people choose whatever they can blow sometimes or um, what they feel their dog responds to. So for example, Bob's right hand whistle is his left hand whistle is um, and then the stop is a, just a, a very sharp and a walk up is so without blowing them and <laughs> distracting all of them. No, and, and I think that the th one of the things I really learned here today is about um, sportsmanship. Yes. And everybody's just an incredible sportsman. Everybody's incredible. I'm, I'm from the east and I'm moving west, so this is the first time I've trialed in the west. And one of the thing, re things I've really noticed is the real camaraderie about, uh, around the handlers, between the handlers, and the supportiveness of them. It's great. It's really good.
Chris Schmaltz is a one-man wonder. He spends the entire day on the hill, in the sun, making sure that each flight of dogs has all of the sheep they need and at exactly the right time so that they're available for the lift for each dog. It's hot, tiring work, but he does it with a smile. from Vancouver Island but I've lived in Japan chaps uh, from Japan as well we're just over here for a few years training and trialing sheep get the better of him he's still a young dog he's a really really tough sheep for a young dog to manage they're lambs and they don't know how to move yet they don't know how to flock they don't know how to flow they just move back and forth with the dog catches their eye just a little bit they'll go this way and then the dog comes around this way and catches their eye they'll go back this way yeah. so you do lots of zigzagging and even these are the top dogs in Canada yeah. and it's a challenge it's tough. you have dogs that are very very strong-eyed I want to thank everyone who helped me prepare this project. If I've learned anything, it's that you're wonderful people who love your dogs, care for your dogs, work your dogs, and celebrate your dogs. You're the best kind of people. And there's another adventure waiting for you right here. Just click the link and I'll see you there.